Geographers have a whole different meaning to the phrase, I need some space. We all need space. Space lies at the heart of being human, living in a world of complexity. How do geographers define space? Geographer Joseph Hobbes described space as the placement of locations on the face of the earth. That placement can be exact as latitude longitude coordinates. It can be as descriptive as someone giving directions to the nearest concert venue. Spatial thinking refers to how we wrap our heads around aspects of space, such as size, pattern, direction, height, and scale. Spatial thinking is an essential tool for humans to order and navigate places and regions. I love ghost stories around the campfire. I love horror movies and novels. Horror stories can offer testaments to the importance of spatial knowledge. A number of these tales involve depriving characters of spatial thinking abilities. A common move for contemporary horror writers and filmmakers is to neutralize the character's cell phone. Phones are dropped, they're broken, they're taken by the antagonist, and batteries ultimately die. Okay, let's examine this in action. Harmony and Montana, they're a young, hip couple from Austin, Texas, but despite being verified Instagram influencers, their marriage is on the rocks. So they booked a glamping trip outside of Austin, up in Texas Hill Country. Seeking to be more present with each other, they chose this glamp ground because of its no cell phone policy. Red flag, they innocently handed over their cell phones to the glamp counselor. What this couple didn't know was that there was more to this place than just a great brunch and Ayurvedic yoga. Harmony in Montana entered a colony of cannibals. No phone in sight to notify the authorities where their location is. Trying to run away, Har Montana are disoriented. Driving to the glamp site, they relied, depended on their smartphone's GPS so that they could free up mental headspace for listening to the latest Modern Love podcast. Distracted then, they now have no idea how to get back to civilization. When characters are robbed of tools to think spatially, the stories just write themselves. These situations are both scary and enticing to readers and viewers. They remind us of the spatial faculties that people too often take for granted. Similar to horror writers and filmmakers, geographers try to help people understand realize the centrality of space in everyday life. Like I said before, space allows us to establish where something is located, as well as the relationships among locations. Through language, we can make rough estimates of where something is, around the corner, past the costume shop, on the left, with new technologies like global positioning systems. We can make precise calculation of where something is, as well as patterns of geographic phenomena. Space doesn't just have to be represented on a map. A person growing up on a desert island can still think spatially, even if she has never encountered a map in her life. Before paper maps and digital maps, we had mental maps. Immanuel Kant noted this phenomenon. Kant wasn't just a famous philosopher. He also taught physical geography. This philosopher affirmed that the human ability to think spatially was etched into our brains. It's already given, like the hair on your skin or the marrow in your bones. Here's a short exercise that I learned from geographer Phil Gershmel, who specializes in how neuroscience can inform how we teach and learn geography. I want you to pay attention to the screen. Do you see anything? Now, don't rewind. Where did you see it? What do you think it was? The human brain is just incredible. Brains can capture the gist of a scene in a matter of milliseconds. That includes aerial or bird's eye views. It also includes ground level views. If you paid attention, you probably noticed an image of Lady Gaga 
in the upper left hand corner. And not only could you identify the location of the image, you could probably interpret what that image was. Such split second spatial thinking has been important for humans as we successfully evaded lions, bears, poisonous snakes, tigers, as well as just the people we can't stand to be around. Humans aren't the only species in the animal kingdom that have the ability to think spatially. Many of our understandings about space actually come from non-human animals, such as capuchin monkeys and rats. Let's make the heart-shaped projection a symbol of space. It's also called the bond projection. We apply space and spatial thinking to shape our perception of the world and everything in it. Like love, our conception of space can be spot on, it can be distorted, and it can be expressive like poetry. Like love languages, space can be represented through different modes of communication, not just maps. Space isn't separate from us. It is integral to what it means to be an animal species, making sense of, sensing, perceiving, and traversing this planet. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, I hope you find it in your heart to subscribe, like, and check out some of my other videos.